In this video, we're going to take a look at Scribo Naturo Viola. So let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. This is a very, very dark purple. The kind of purple that with the right paper and light can almost pass for black. Kind of. It always manages to just have that bit of purple tone really coming through even in the darkest of the writing. Now, there's a lot of tone variation depending on what pen you put it into. And when it does shade, it is very gentle and really lets that purple show. It kind of shades backwards as it does it very nicely shading down. I'm definitely going to enjoy using this bottle that was graciously sent by an unknown viewer. For anyone that's made an offer in the past at sending inks, my general response has been how backlogged I am because I usually film a couple months in advance. And so when people have emailed me, I've usually, you know, declined. And at this point, this one was sent and I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I would just ask that you email me and ask so that I don't get sent inks that I already have lined up for review. So if you have an ink that you want to send, then send me an email that you'll find in the description and on the channel page. I like to change things up and use a different pen each day. Now, this particular one took me a couple of days to do because of a experimental format that I'm doing here. The pen for today is an Aurora Optima with a broad nib. It's inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The bottle this ink comes in is truly substantial and holds three ounces of ink. Just taking a look at it, you don't really think that it has as much ink as it does. It's massive. Here it is next to a Jeherban bottle, just to give you a sense of scale. The bottle has some serious chunk and heft to it. But let's get into the first writing sample done on Clairefontaine. Looking at the fine nib, you can see how dark this really tends to show itself being on the very white paper. Now we get no feather, we get no spread, and because this is a wetter writing fine, we're really not getting the shading. Not very much. You get a couple of moments that it looks just a little bit lighter. And you can really see how here where I pointed out how it can be very dark, almost black, but just keeps that bit of purple about it. Looking at the medium nib, it is just a tad bit darker than we had with the fine. Now with that, the purple I think is showing just a little bit better. We're not getting any uh, feather. We're not getting any spread. You do see little bits of shading in formula on the top line. You see just a little bit of some lighter areas showing up on the R to M. You see it only occasionally on a few words. So the shading for this paper is not particularly there. Looking at the stub nib, we get about the same tone that we had with the, with the medium. 
we get no feather, we get no spread, we get a couple of moments of shading that are going to happen. On the second line, when you look at is, slightly different tone than what's around it. Smaller goes from a little bit lighter to much darker, and you see those purple tones starting to come through. Now, when we get down to the last line, you're going to see the word operation that gets much darker, gets lighter in the middle, darker, and then lighter again. It shows how it actually can shade very well when it wants to. Looking at the back of the page, we see that we get no bleeding, no ghosting, and no issues. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao X750 with a fine nib. a Jinhao X450 with a medium nib. A Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub. The next writing sample is done on Tomoe River paper. Looking at the fine nib, the tone itself I think is a little bit lighter than we had on the Clairefontaine. We get no feather, we get no spread, we would probably be shocked if we got it. There is some shading that goes on. I think it's showing itself a little bit nicer here. You see it in combining when I went back over the B. Two is a nice lighter tone, but look at the O, gets a bit darker. When on the second line, you see four starts darker, gets a little bit lighter at the R. So I think the shading's coming through a little bit nicer here. Looking at the medium nib, a little bit darker than we had with the fine. We get no feather, we get no spread, we keep the purplish tone. It's not looking towards a black. The not quite pure white paper is really letting us see the purple that this has as a very dark purple. Pleasant tone on the page. Looking at the stub nib, we get no feather, no spread. The tone is the darkest tone on the page. A little bit darker than we had with that medium, quite a bit darker than the fine. As far as shading, not really. It's going down fairly even, and the kind of squeegee motion that a stub nib can do is making this a very solid tone the entire way. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleed through, the ghosting is expected, and I think if your writing is really lined up on the back, then you could probably write on the back of the page. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, and it's immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds, where the one on the right, marked with a D, was allowed to dry for 10 minutes before it was put into water. The next writing sample is done on Rhodia graph paper. Looking at the fine nib, we still get a little bit lighter tone than we had with the Clairefontaine. We get no feather, we get no spread, we do get some very subtle shading that's going on. On the top line, you see the is quite a bit darker than uh, or some right next to it, where of gets from lighter into darker. And we will see this show up periodically where it does just that. So the shading's available and it's there, and when it does, it really draws attention to the purple tone this ink has. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than we had with the fine. We get no feather, we get no spread, we get no shading, but we get a very nice, very dark purple. Still, it just I'm amazed at how well it's holding on to that purple. I kind of expected as I was writing with it to lose it and have it look much more like a deep black, but I was wrong. Just a very dark purple.
Looking at the stub nib, we have roughly the same darkness that we had with the medium. However, it's showing up much more as purple the whole way through, unmistakably purple. It's not feathering, it's not spreading, it's doing perfectly well in all three of these writings, covering up all of those lines from the graph paper. I was curious how well that would cover that or if you'd see those lines come through. Not at all. Shading pretty darn well. In the third line, you see side goes lighter to darker, ends a nice solid purple, and common goes lighter to darker again. Looking at the back of the page, we see that we have no issue with bleed, no problem with ghosting. You can easily use the back of the page. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. This smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. Looking at the fine nib, we get a darker purple than we had on the last paper without a doubt, much darker than the Rhodia, but it's still a very purple. We're not getting any feathering. We're not getting any spread. We are only getting the slightest hint occasionally of some shading. This paper is not really made for fountain pens, so I don't expect it. But you are going to see areas like on the fourth to fifth line on the right side between four numbers on the right and based upon on the far right, some tone change. Looking at the medium nib, it is quite a bit darker than we had with the fine. Very dark purple with no feather, no spread. Unfortunately, the wetter medium and thicker lines have eaten up the shading that's there. So, no shading. Looking at the stub nib, it is only a tad bit darker than what we had with the medium. We get no feather, we get no spread. However, we do get some shading that's going on in the writing or more specifically, a lot of tone variation going on in the writing. Look at the equation part with the A plus B in parentheses plus C. All the way across that, you see a lot of change in tone. The word axioms, second line, first word, very nice theorems right underneath, really showing some shading well. Looking at the back of the page, we get some ghosting. I think you could use the back of the page rather easily, but we get no bleed through whatsoever. With hundreds of inks tested, let's take a look at a couple color comparables. Here is Ackerman number 30. Here is Cross Violet. Here is Diamine Violet. Here is Lamy Violet. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the fine nib, we get a very dark purple, much like on the last paper. We get no feather. We get no spread. We get the tiniest bit sometimes of some tone variation in the writing. Not tons, but this paper is not going to bring out the best effect of the ink. It's just a great notebook to use. I've used them for a long time and really enjoy them. Looking at the medium nib, a bit darker than what we had with the fine, still holding on to that purple without any issues. We get no feather, 
We get no spread. We do get a little more tone variation, I think. In the word equation, the E is darker than the Q, and then it lightens up at the U, A, T, and then gets darker at the I, O, N. Nice shading going on, and that occurs a few different spaces, so I'm going to say it shades here pretty well. Looking at the stub nib, it is darker than everything else on the page. It's not feathering. It's not spreading. I almost said it's not shading, but it is because when you look at linear at the E, it gets much darker. When you look at equation, it starts dark, gets light in the middle, dark at the T, lighter at the I-O-N. So it does shade fairly well. Looking at the back of the page, while this paper's never shown up on the channel till now, you can see why I like it so much. Very little ghosting, no bleed through whatsoever, easily writing on the back of the page. While it's nice to compare it to other purple inks, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. Here is a black ink by Levenger, Raven Black, a permanent ink. Here is a green ink by Diatramentis, Pine Green. Here is a yellow ink by Diatramentis, their Emma Goldman or Gold. Here is a pink ink by Platinum, their Pink. The last writing sample is done on crowd favorite 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the fine nib, we get a lighter purple than we've gotten on a bunch of the papers. Very distinctly, very strongly a purple tone here without a problem. We get the slightest bit of feathering. Not feathering that should stop you from using it, but it definitely feathers. It has the slightest spread as well and no shading whatsoever. Looking at the medium nib, it is a little darker than we had with the fine. It does feather rather consistently. Not a good choice for this pen on this paper. It does have some spread, takes it up to almost a broad. We get really, you know what, I was going to say no shading, but I know that that's a lie because I see a few darker areas, but it makes me worry about bleed through. Looking at the stub nib, this is the darkest tone on the page. It's quite a bit darker than the medium. We get a lot of feathering. You see it all the way across the top line. We get a lot of spread going on. Makes my normal bad handwriting look really worse. It's a nice blob. It looks like I was writing with a marker. The problem being the paper, not the pen or the ink. Does it shade? No. But the color of the ink that we're getting, I think, is a beautiful purple. Looking at the back of the page, I circled tons of spots all over. It's like a secret code in the amount that it bled through. So you are going to corrupt the page underneath. Looking at the ghosting, there's no reason to even wonder why, as obviously you can't use the back of the page. So what nib and pen do I think are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? The Aurora Optima that I chose has a regular medium flow broad to it. And I think I did this ink real justice by choosing that pen. I keep that purple tone. I get bits of shading in most of the better papers that I write with, even on some of the cheaper papers. It's doing its job really well. The bits of purple show through, nice. I would go with a medium flow, broad, or maybe a drier medium, just to keep that purple in the shading. The 
This has been an experimental video for me. This has been the first time I've gotten a viewer ink. As I said before, I've had a tendency to pass them by because of my backlog. And when inks come in, then there would be that feeling of wanting to get it out quite quickly. This was a tremendous learning experience for me that as I start accepting inks, I know it's gonna take quite a bit longer to do it. This video took a number of days to get through doing it. So I would appreciate your feedback. Tell me what you like about it. Tell me what you don't like about it. And thanks for watching.